Good morning. How are you doing today, Daniele? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. So tell me, what is for you today the main object of what we're going to be talking about? Well, the, it's mostly about my uh, my artistry, you know, what I do um, as an artist, as an electronic music artist, I would say, <laughs> as well as, anyway, a round musician and, uh, you know, a business guy in a sense, because that's still, you know, what I believe it is at the end of the day when you are an artist, you need to develop your brand and, uh, yeah, so that's what it is. <laughs> So that, that that's fantastic. So what we're going to, if it's okay with you, we're going to just talk freely about a few things of what you just described, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. First of all, introduce yourself. That would be fantastic for all of the people out there who are not super familiar yet with your great work. Of course, yeah. So I'm Daniele, or best known as Cis Lunar, um, and, I, um, and I'm a guitarist, but I also produce music and mostly electronic music, and I make music for myself where I, um, you know, bring my... Um, you know, my artist uh, uh, project forward where I play uh, electronic music, but with a twist, I'm not just simply, let's say, a DJ, but I play um, live instruments uh, together with software instruments to create, a, let's say, a, an original, uh, you know, electronic set where I play um, improvised uh, parts in music that, you know, for people that don't know, it's more of a you know, really open and free uh, interpretation of music where you don't necessarily stick to a structure, if you will, or to anything that is written down. So, hey, listen, what, what it sounds, it's, I, I had the pleasure of listening to your music, of course. That's why I thought it was yeah. fantastic to have you today and, and ask a few questions. I think the first question is, why did you decide being perfectly trained as a great guitarist? And why did you decide to merge with what is effectively what you call electronic music i mean i'm a big believer that that the trend in the future will be more about electronic music mm -hmm. and more about ambient music and 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 music frequencies but that's just one of my passion but I, i'm very curious to hear someone in your position how do you got to that conclusion how do you got there well it's of course it's a long trip really because i started when i was younger you know when i was a teenager uh, to play the guitar and it started because I wanted to be a DJ at first, but then a dear friend of mine told me, if you want to be a good DJ, you need to be a good musician first, because that will be really helpful for you. You know, you will be able to uh, understand music better, to be able to mix, you know, music better. So then I started playing the guitar because I had one laying around, it was my father's, and I, you know, fell in love with the guitar instead, in a sense. So I kept studying and, uh, you know, practicing, obviously the guitar and then I fell in love in playing, you know, um, many other genres uh, being also, you know, a lot of rock. Um, we started with that, obviously, but um, a lot of rock, a lot of blues, um, then slowly going into soul and then eventually jazz, where then I decided to study uh, in a conservatory, you know, for three years. So I did my bachelor's there. And, um, and yeah, so I have this degree in jazz guitar and it allowed me to really understand, uh, you know, uh, how music works to the deepest level and how you know because at some point you feel like i mean at least how, that's how i felt uh, like every time there is something new to discover like i don't want it to just be the boring old uh, not to take anything away from blues at all but like the blues has a really simple structure that can be repeated over and over so uh, you know it's, it's really similar but then i wanted something more i wanted to explore something more experimental if you will so uh as i went forward and you know even explore things like free jazz which you know if you really listen to free jazz that is pretty much yeah you would say it's just noise so it's, it's not really uh, you know uh, it doesn't have a structure it's not really something that we will hear in, in radio for example but then um, my love passion for electronic music still stay there in the meantime and then I discovered you know especially with these new technologies and the use of uh, you know of course, softwares uh, mostly, and uh, devices, all sorts, hardwares where you can create things that are really, you know, again, improvised, but just like uh, they come out on the on the spot, you know, like you can just then merge the two things. So and there's a there's a good old debate: technique versus feeling. Mm -hmm. What what is your what is your view on that? Because if you play a lot of 
spontaneous and improvisation there's a big element of of feeling so is it is it for you that technique is just there to allow your feelings to be expressed better or is it that your feelings will override your technique at any given time no i think that one has to have the technique for sure like you need to be <laughs> knowledgeable first and then you can let your feelings just be free um i don't remember who was saying that uh, it was probably john coltrane but they were saying that you know take the art and then bring it apart you know like don't uh, you know first learn how to do the craft and then just be free to break the rules if you will and then just play however you like but it's i think it makes sense because rather than be someone that says okay i never studied this and then I, i'll just be guided by my feeling you know and then i just go like you just just define you know you're just i don't want to say laziness but that's the thing like there's lots of people that are that have like that are self-thought they are really you know really capable they're really good but that's because anyway they spend lots of times still practicing their craft anyway so they you know they so work with it, that it, i find it very interesting because um we are coming out of the season of um, industry uh, rewards and industry uh, ceremonies and awards and whatever have you. And, you know, I'm certainly, I've been around a bit longer than you on this one. So when I'm seeing the way the industry is rewarding artists, and I'm not talking about financial compensation, I'm talking about price giving, you know, um, Emmy, Grammys, wh whatever you want to call it, you know, the, the way they are given. I do not necessarily always agree, but that's a question of my age, probably. But with the way things are rewarded, you have some phenomenal artists out there. However, what is recognized is not that complicated work or most artistic work. Sometimes what is recognized is, uh, shall we say, the uh, the simplest form of of their of their trade so what I, it would be interesting to see what is your view because you you're up and coming you started not long ago to push forward your career and you're confronted to these things and you must be listening to music thinking well they're not really good players or they're not really making sense or they're not saying anything new so it, it would be interesting to hear what you think about it yeah, I mean, I have many thoughts about all this because there's, um, you know, many aspects to this thing. Because it is true that, uh, like you said, sometimes it feels like they're giving, you know, the price to the wrong person. And not that I'm saying that it should be given to me, obviously. But what I'm saying is that the, you know, um, it is true that sometimes, you know, simple things, you know, still get through. But that's still how, you know, I understand how, you know, one interprets them. So... It, it's still there, but then there's also the technical part for me uh, sometimes that I think, you know, like there's so much music out there and, uh, you know, if even for people that really don't know ma anything about music theory or anything of the sort, so you can still see that many songs start to sound kind of like similar to each other because at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of always the same things. That's why, again, I try to try personally, you know, to try things that are not exactly ordinary yet. I feel though that when I try to then chase that so much, I kind of get lost in a sense where I don't, you know, I just I just take it so seriously that then I feel like I still lose the value in itself anyway. So I still then go back to, you know, certain things that are like more common anyway for certain things and then, you know, say, okay, this is something that, you, you know, we listen also on the radio perhaps, but yet still different you know so still giving that twist so i believe that eventually people i mean to be optimistic in that um because i am and i think there's still like even the simplest of the you know let's say chord progression or the structures of the songs there's still like the way you interpret them that you know makes the difference and that's what you know my win your prize you know uh i, I think you're you're muted simon sorry i can't hear you yeah, you, you've chosen a very brave path because uh, improvisation and, and um, digital or, or, or techni technical music is something that does not have, have lyrics, right? Most of it is not associated with lyrics. So 
it's difficult to tell a story without the lyrics. So some people, although they don't listen to the words of a song, and necessarily the chorus of part of it resonate because it stick to their brain. By you choosing to be improvisation and instrumental, you are even going to what I think is a more universal language, which is fantastic. Yeah. But yeah. you set yourself up not to be commercial. I mean, I still strive to, of course, be commercial enough to, because eventually, like, if, you know, an artist such as myself, like, I can't really, if I still stick always to improvising music, I can't exactly, you know, release music in a certain way, meaning that at the end of the day, you still need to record something. So my, the main idea for me when I play my sets is that, you know, they're unique, they're not the same, you know, that, that there's not the same songs, not the same list. Um, nothing is exactly the same as the one before, but there must still, of course, be certain vibes to it, so certain uh, recognizable sounds, I would say, or anyway, instruments that mm -hmm. I've been using. So uh, that's why then I'm still, uh, you know, producing like proper tracks where, you know, I can then, you know, uh, release eventually and people can listen to this for sure. So, so one of the first time I came across you was uh, a, a mixed medium of music and visual effects, uh, which I found very interesting personally. I think that that spoke to me a lot more than maybe just listening to some, uh, as you say, chord progression or freestyling or um, or mixed media. I, I found that very, very fascinating. How do you decide to go down that path when you did it? What, what was the trigger for you to, to do that? Well, I think it was also... Again, like we said before, just try to just really try something different, something something new, you know, something mm -hmm. uh, original where, you know, again, we digest, let's say, art, whether it's music or visual arts, you know, in, or any kind of arts anyway, in, you know, in different, you know, s senses, you no, know, just mm -hmm. with our eyes, with our, with our touch even, with our ears. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to do something that, yeah, it, it speaks from more than one medium, more, just, more than just uh, audio, you know, also visual. And then we can, you know, improvise visual too, you know, like nowadays there's so many powerful tools that can generate, you know, videos. And um, yeah, so um, I decided to do something like that. At first I wanted to make it even more like interactive, like um, in a way that, you know, the audience can uh, decide certain things about the, the the performance itself so like actually engaging with me as if they were you know musicians themselves and uh, I'm also a strong believer of the fact that you don't have to be necessarily you know uh, a professional musician to still enjoy yourself you know in terms of like uh, cr crafting something even if it's a small part of it you know and a professional musician these days is is a very strange concept I found uh, yeah. which uh, it brings me to the next question. I mean, as a young, talented artist that you are, how would you say, what, what words of wisdom would you give younger artists to want to follow your path of, of trying to, you know, to dedicate their time and their, their energy to their passion, really? Well, one thing I was, a couple of things actually I would say is that you need to, you need to, of course, you know, uh, practice and, you know, perfect your craftsmanship for sure. And um, make sure you have an open mind, not just then musically, but also, you know, for all the rest, because many musicians, and I was also one of those, you know, they focus a lot on, you know, learning to play their instrument or instruments. Um, and then they don't focus at all on what is for better for <laughs> for worse anyway the other side of being anyway an artist where you need to still you know know the business part of it on how to you know uh, be in the industry and how to promote yourself and well that we could go down the rabbit hole or social media you know and all these things that are nowadays are being used to you know bring your uh, music forward and uh, and yeah so I would say just make sure that they go at the same pace you know together so that you don't just focus on one thing rather than the other. Yeah, I, th I think you're right there. You, you need to be able to face uh, the entirety of the industry, but it's not easy to understand what it is. 